Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dennis Keating and I've had the great privilege of being the pastor of the church where Phil and Carol and uh, Heather and Rich uh, grew up and served for many, many years, Emmanuel Faith Community Church in Escondido. Uh, I had the privilege of pastor of the church for a few decades and uh, have been personal friends with them for almost four decades. So. Our history goes way, way back, and I was absolutely honored to be asked to share just for a couple of minutes about Phil's life, many Carol's life too, uh, in ministry uh, in our assembly at Emmanuel Faith in Escondido. Um, really, their background begins because of the accordion, and I don't know if most of you know that Phil played the accordion for many, many years. He started in with a group of guys and met somebody from Emmanuel Faith Church uh, whose niece was dating one of the pastors of our church. And that's how Phil and Carol got to Emmanuel Faith and became friends with Richard and Marcia Williams. Uh, Richard was our children's pastor for decades and the Seelys and the Williams became just best of best of friends. And, um, over the decades, they have served faithfully in so many different ways. I mean, tons of different ways. And uh, they started in our children's ministry. March at the time was leading the kids' choirs and Carol's uh, musical ability and playing the piano was a perfect fit. And on the other side, uh, Phil's uh, ministry, kind of being a hands-on kind of guy, uh, was in helping Richard build all the props for the various things that the kids were doing. They would spend hours out in Rich's garage coming up with ideas, building spaceships and different themes that the Daily Vacation Bible Schools were all built around. And so um, with the Sealies, you kind of got a twofer. Uh, so if you got Phil, you got Carol. If you got Carol, you got Phil. And they worked and served together in so many different ways. Uh, one of the things that they did was they helped write a script for um, the walk through the Old Testament, if you remember back the walk through days. And uh, what Rich and Phil did is they decided to come up with a, a great idea for the burning bush. So they kept their Christmas trees from a number of years back and decided to light it on fire to illustrate the burning bush as the kids were walking through our campus. They would hear the different parts of the scriptures and God speaking to them. So it was an unforgettable moment. Uh, both Phil and Rich liked fire and <laughs> it was uh, very, very uh, apparent at that time. And the kids rounded the corner and uh, Phil and Rich had gone out a few months before down to the beach here in California, gathered up a whole bunch of seaweed threw it into a black trash bag and let it sit for months and really ripen. And they used that. They recruited a good friend of theirs and put seaweed all over him uh, as Jonah and recounted the story of Jonah with this man in, in this stinky seaweed. So those are the kinds of things that Phil Seeley got involved with. And he absolutely loved doing it. Um, if I had to sum up Phil, he loved serving, and primarily because he saw it as an opportunity uh, to see the Lord work. And so he and Carol, but uh, they said yes to a lot of ministries, and I'll just recount a few of them. Um, Phil was deeply involved with the ministry we called Men on a Mission here back in the in the 70s and 80s when construction really got slow in California. A lot of our contractors and workers got really, really depressed because there was no work. Well, our associate pastor came up with this idea of men on a mission. And Phil got involved with that where they would go out and they would build camps, build seminaries, build Bible schools. They went internationally and Phil was involved with that especially with a couple of his favorite, favorite projects, uh, one Broken Arrow Bible Camp in, in uh, New Mexico, where Phil was deeply involved, uh, Pine Valley Christian uh, Conference Center here in uh, East County of San Diego. Um, Phil and his team uh, helped build the SIM, the Sudan Interior uh, Missions 
a retirement home for retired missionaries here in Carlsbad. So Phil used his contracting skills in lots of different ways. And um, that's where a lot of the stories came from. They were coming back from uh, New Mexico, from Broken Arrow, and uh, were in a RV and the RV um, kind of got off the side of the road and tipped over. Phil was asleep in the back and uh, nobody got hurt by that, but there was an 18 wheeler following them that hit the RV. And one of the guys inside was slightly injured and they got to the, to the hospital and um, our associate pastor, they, they said that he, uh, his response to all of it was, you know, there's only one reason why you're not all dead. It's because the devil couldn't handle all of you at the same time. And so um, it, there was a camaraderie of like-minded men that Phil just naturally gravitated to. Um, he was uh, profoundly organized, a great mind, uh, could think through details. That's what made him such a successful businessman. And he um, helped lead numerous ministries at Emmanuel Faith, our outreach ministries, neighbor days. We have thousands of people on our campus. Uh, Phil and Carol helped uh, design that whole thing, oversee it. Uh, they started a financial counseling ministry with individuals back before Dave Ramsey came on the scene to help folks in our church who were struggling with debt. They helped lead our 50th anniversary uh, celebration at the church and all the things that we did. Uh, Phil served on our elder board for decades. He was chairman of the board for many of those years. Uh, when it became apparent that we needed to uh, continue to build our church, we decided to get debt free and he helped oversee debt free in 93. And when we didn't quite make it, we tried uh, no more in 94, which we ultimately accomplished. Praise the Lord for that. But Phil was deeply involved. Um, when we outgrew our campus, uh, Phil uh, helped head up our land acquisition committee that went out here in North San Diego County looking for 50 acres. That culminated in our purchase of a large parcel of property for a church plant. Um, he was... Uh, a lay leader for our blessed to be a blessing uh, financial campaign to help pay for that land acquisition. So uh, Phil was deeply involved. He was part of the dream team for our memorial ministry where Carol would play the piano and uh, a friend Penny Nielsen would sing. Well wherever Carol went and needed the piano, Phil was always the one hauling it. And so over the decades, they were deeply involved. And this was all while running Seacon Construction, while caring for aging parents, uh, while raising two absolutely fabulous kids in Heather and Rich, and in being a really great husband to Carol. And so um, if he said no to you in terms of serving in your church, it's because we wore him out. That's the, the, the honest truth of it. And uh, in my own recollection, I see Phil as a man of great faith. He was always so very positive that the Lord was going to work in and through these ministries. And, and his constant mantra, to, we just have to trust the Lord. The Lord will come through. He was a very, very humble man. And I think it came as a result in many ways. He came to faith when he was 12 years old. He was just a kiddo. And, um, and through life had his ups and downs. He ended up in 1967 uh, getting drafted and ended up, found himself in Vietnam. I think he thought that he was going to end up in, in some finance office um, because he has a degree in accounting. But he ends up as the point man in an army infantry group and um, uh, ends up in Vietnam and spends eight months in country, is wounded three times. And as a result of that, he finally did end up in the finance department. But the day that Phil was uh, to leave country and come back home, a mortar shell exploded five feet away from his bunk on the other side of a bunker wall. And so um, there's so many stories like that of God's hand being on Phil. 
And I don't know if somebody else shared that story or his background or any of it, forgive me if I've repeated something, but I just thought that it was just so important to understand that, that Phil's faith was built over a decade of trusting the Lord in very, very difficult situations, and it just propelled him to continue to trust the Lord in service uh, in, in his days, especially with us at Emmanuel Faith Church. So uh, God had a plan for Phil Seeley, and he faithfully fulfilled it. Uh, Carol, Heather, Rich, uh, I love you. We love you. And thank the Lord for the gift that your dad was to us here at Emmanuel Faith Church. We are all better people for knowing him, and Phil is a, a, just a great man. So God bless all of you. I wish I was there with you in person, but